Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll talk about the security of the Digi Hillman Key Exchange. Uh, we're going to make some basic uh, discussions about uh, what the security is and some of the important problems that are related with uh, that security. Now, the first uh, thing that I'm going to mention is that the, the basic version of the Digi Hillman is not secure against active attackers. Active attackers means those that are the ones who want to change the message, change, change the cipher text. So Eve, which is our attacker in this case, can modify or generate full messages. So the Eve Hillman key exchange has no way to check whether the message that was sent is originally from the person who is supposed to be sending those messages. So that's one of the things. Now that's the basic version of the Eve Hillman. Uh, now let's suppose we have now a passive attacker. A passive attacker is the one attacker that is only interested in decrypting the cipher test or uh, getting the key in this case, which will equivalent to the same thing. Um, so if Eve is, a, Eve is a passive attacker, the goal of E will be to compute the key because once she computes the key, then he will get access to all the plain text. Okay, so what? Uh, in, a, in order for Eve to compute uh, the key, she, she knows a couple, uh, some things. One of the things that she knows is the public parameters P and alpha. Now remember that this P and alpha are public, so she knows those uh, P and everybody knows those P and alpha. P is the prime and alpha, remember, is that generator. She also knows A and B, which are the messages that were sent through the insecure channel, which are alpha to the A modulo P and alpha to the B modulo P, where alpha is the generator. And remember, A and B are the numbers that Alice and Bob uh, shows uh, from 2 to P minus uh, 2. Uh, they are random numbers. So this is only by listening through the channel she can get this information. That she knows A and B. She doesn't know the details of A or B. She knows just this capital A and capital B. So the question is, it will be this. If Eve knows these three pieces of information, which in reality are four, P, alpha, A and B, uh, can even compute the key, which is this is the chair key, alpha to the A, B, modulo P. Would that be possible? Now, Eve doesn't know A and B because this A and B was the random number that uh, Alice chose and B is the random number that Bob chose. Uh, so she doesn't know these numbers. Now, of course, if she knows these numbers, of the key will be just a modular exponentiation because alpha and P are, are public. So the problem of finding the chair key, knowing uh, P, alpha, capital A, and capital B, that is called the Diffie-Hillman problem. And if that problem were easy to solve, then Diffie-Hillman key exchange will uh, not work. It will not be a valid key exchange. Now, so let's mention that in here. So if E can compute either the exponent A or exponent B, then E can compute easily the chair, the chair key K. Let's see why. Let's say uh, Eve uh, can compute A. So if she knows what that is, then she also knows that B is equal to alpha to the B modulo P. Uh, she doesn't know B, but she knows what B, this capital B is, not the lowercase b. She knows this B. Now what we, she can do is, if she knows A, she can take capital B to the A power, and that will be equal to this modular exponentiation, doing here the law of exponents, this will give you alpha to the AB, which is the chair key. In a similar way, if she computes uh, B, or she knows B somehow, uh, she can compute the key also, because she also knows this, and this number was sent through the channel. A, capital A, and capital B were sent through the channel. Then the only thing that she has to do, if she knows B, then just take this capital A to the lowercase b, and she will again compute the shared key. So in any case, if uh, Eve uh, can compute either A or B, then she will know what the shared key is, which is not very good. Uh, okay, so now how can she compute that? Well, one way could be this. If Eve, if Eve has an efficient way to solve the discrete log problem, which is the sequence of videos that we saw before this, if she can do that, she can easily compute either A or B if she has an efficient way to solve it. So that means an efficient algorithm. Why is that? 
So let's look at this part of this message that was sent through the channel. A, capital A is known, that was sent through the channel. Alpha is also known because that's public. P is also known because that's public. Now remember that this A here, this exponent, is the discrete log and base alpha of A. So then this exponent is this. So if, it, if she can compute this grid log um, efficiently, so meaning in an amount of time that is reasonable in this group here, ZP star, then she has the exponent A, lowercase, and then if she has this, she already knows how to uh, get the key. If you uh, look here, if she computes A, and she knows that. So the discrete logarithm problem here, if there is a way to solve this problem efficiently, then it will render useless the difficult man monkey's difficult change. Fortunately, that hasn't happened, so there has not been any really efficient algorithm uh, to solve this, uh, this problem, the discrete logarithm problem. Okay, so let me emphasize that. So suppose you are Eve. Suppose you are listening to the channel. So you know P and alpha, which are, they, are, they are public. So this is the prime P and alpha is the generator for that group. So I'm gonna give you not a small example, kind of a medium-sized example here so to, uh, to show you how this will be done. Of course, if this were real life, you will never choose a prime number, which is 256 bit length, which is the one that is here. But this is just for the example. So this is a prime number of 256 bits. This alpha that I have here, this is a generator of the group or that special element that you have to choose uh, to, in order to do the difficult man key exchange. So P and alpha are public, so Eve knows this, so that means you know it. So listening through the channel, uh, she knows capital A and capital B. So what does she know? She know uh, alpha to the A modulo the prime number so this is alpha, the one that is here, and this is the prime number. I put dots there just to indicate there are those numbers over here, this one and this one, um, because I don't have enough space to write all that down. Now, uh, from Alice, because Alice is computing this modular exponentiation because she already chose this uh, lowercase a, this is the number that Eve sees through the channel. So she has this information here. From Bob, she also sees the attacker, or you also see this number that is here, which is uh, alpha to the lowercase b, that was the number chosen by Bob, modulo the prime number. So this is the number that Eve uh, sees. Now, let's suppose you have an efficient algorithm, uh, algorithm to compute the discrete logarithm problem. So suppose you have something like that. Suppose you have an efficient method for computing the discrete logs, and then you can you could get that uh, this is true. Uh, if you say, you can compute, I can compute the lowercase a, that exponent, which is the discrete log, in base alpha of this number, that's the number a, capital A, that was sent through the channel. That's the number that Alice sent through the channel, this number right here. So if Alice has a good algorithm, efficient, fast, and she will compute this, this will be the number A. Once she has the number A, the only thing she has to do now is do a modular exponentiation, and that's it. She will get the key for the difficult one key exchange. So, so it only takes a modular exponentiation to get the key, so she's gonna do B to the A. B is known because that's what's sent through the channel. So this is B, the number B, to the A, which is this long number here that was computed here from the discrete log modulo p and then unfortunately she will get the key which is this one right here so that will be a, a big problem the big problem will be that uh, if there is an efficient way to solve the discrete log problem then the difficult human key exchange will have to be uh, forgotten basically because it will not be useful anymore but that doesn't hasn't happened yet now the difficult the discrete logarithm problem, DLP, and the Diffie-Hillman key exchange are related in that way. Now, what I said there is, if you know how to solve the discrete logarithm problem, you know how to crack Diffie-Hillman. But that might not be the only way. So it has not been proven that solving the, this problem is the only way to break the DHKE. 
Now, it's, it is one way to do it. So if you solve this problem, of course, you can break the defect Kilman key exchange, but it has not been proven that that's the only one. Now, um, I'm going to give you uh, the summary records here for computing the discrete logs in CP um, with the best algorithms that are not today and using uh, the best machines. So if here the bit length of P, this is what we're referring to here to number P, if the bit length is 193, then that record mean doing discrete logs in an efficient way was done in 1991. And you see here the list here, right? So these are the bit lengths and the dates they have the discrete logs uh, can be, have been computed efficiently for all the elements here in CP star for params that are out of this length. So I don't have the updated uh, thing for the, uh, 2008 up to uh, this year, which is 2016. Uh, but I'm sure there are uh, some more records here. So that's why it is important when you do the Hillman key exchange to actually choose uh, prime long enough. So it cannot be actually compute the key using these grid logarithms in this case. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the uh, security of the Diffie-Hillman uh, keys exchange. Uh, we might talk a little bit more about uh, this uh, key exchange in another video. So I will stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.